Hey guys, my name is Blaze, and welcome to part 3B, I guess, of my action RPG for beginners tutorial series. Now, if you haven't already watched the part A, or half, I think it is, of part A, then you need to go back and watch that one, because with this one, we've actually already done most of the setup. In fact, we've done all of the setup. What we're going to do for part B is instead of using four different sprites, we're just going to use three. So I'm going to delete the left sprite actually and just get rid of that completely. So I'm going to delete that and go with this one. Now with this particular method, like I said, we're just going to flip the sprites over. So we need to make a few changes. The first one is in the macro section, we need to do away with both left and right and instead we're just going to use the word instead of right and instead of left we're just going to use horizontal right so horizontal meaning left and right and I guess in a way I'm just going to be going forward with a project using this method because I actually filmed it second and to be absolutely honest with you guys in old games that's what people use. They flip the sprite instead of making a whole nother set. Um, it may be seen as lazy by some people um, in this day and age, but really at the end of the day, it's up to you. It's up to you as the game designer to choose for yourself which method you feel works for your game. So here we have our direction down, we have action, idle. That's not gonna change. But what is going to change here is we're going to create a 2D array. Now, if you watch the first video, then you already know what a 2D array is. But for the people who switched over to watch this one, the 2D array is basically a an X and Y version of a one dimensional array. So to keep a long story short, think of a two dimensional array as having X and Y values and a regular one dimensional array as just having a Y value or just an X value. So I don't wanna to get too into that right now. We are going to go and do a part in this series where we go into a little bit more depth, but for now, let's just keep this where it is. So here with view, that's what I'm gonna call my array, give your array a name. In view, we're going to use the macros that we've got here so we've got horizontal and we now need so that horizontal is our direction that's going to be our x value and what we need to do is add in a y value in this case our y values will be our actions so in this case we are going to use idle now this isn't complete yet we actually need to assign a value to this um, array space i guess is what i'll call it and what we're going to do is for horizontal, we're going to call ours view player right. And then for the next one, we're going to go view. And for this one, we're going to use, actually we'll use up and idle. And we're going to set that to view player up and then view uh, down for our direction and idle. And that's going to be view player down. Now it doesn't really matter which order you put your array in, just as long as it it lines up with the way that you set up your macros. It's not a requirement that you guys do it in that way. It just makes it easier to reference if you get lost or if you put the project down for a while. It makes it easier to reference that. So here in the step event, the first thing that we're going to do is go all the way down to the bottom here. Let me just extend that out a bit. So at the bottom here, we're going to go ahead and say sprites, whoops, free sprites index. So which sprite it's going to draw equals the view and our direction and our action. Now keep in mind that the only action that we have at the moment is idle. That's fine. Towards later parts in the series, we're going to start adding new actions in like attacking, 
talking, interacting, stuff like that. Um, but for now, we're, we just have the idle. And of course, our direction is something that we need to manipulate now. So let's do that. So up here, right after the x-axis, down here, we're going to give some space for the rest of our code that we're going to be using. And what we're going to do first is we're going to say if, I'm just checking my time. Okay, five minutes. If our x-axis is not equal to zero, so basically if our x-axis is greater than or less than zero, we are going to say um, direction equals uh, horizontal. There we go. Done. So now we're telling the game that, hey, our sprite is going to be using the view player right. Um, if you want to rename it to be view player horizontal or view player left and right, that's up to you. I'm just going to use what I have uh, in my resource bank here. So direction equals horizontal. Now we need to make another check. So we need to say if uh, x-axis is less than zero. So basically if we're going left, we need to say image x scale, and that's a built-in variable. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it's a built-in variable. And basically what we're going to say is it's going to be negative one. So we're just flipping the sprite. And then we have else if x axis is greater than zero, then image x scale is one. So basically, what we're doing is if we're moving left, then we're telling the sprite or we're telling the game object to say, hey, flip the sprite like to the opposite side, right? Flip it negative one on the X axis. So it's going to flip that. But if we're going to the right, then our game will say, hey, flip the sprite on the X axis to the right, right? Because left is a negative value here in game maker and right is a positive value and that's what we're doing here there is a shorter way to do this but for the benefit of beginners we're going to use this method for now now if i have just else then i can't say x axis is greater than zero i can of course say if but what that does is it will flip it back to uh, negative one if we're not doing anything. So keep that in mind. Else if basically allows us to put in another, another check here, but it also makes sure that, uh, it also makes sure that our direction, <coughs> excuse me, our actual checks here. So basically we're saying if we're less than zero, then we go this way. We go left. If we're going right, then we're going right. If we basically aren't pressing either left or right, then it just stays to whatever direction we were pressing last. So that's what else if generally does. Uh, that took a lot more time than I expected to explain. But essentially we're done. This is really the major difference between this method and method A if you're coming from that video. Um, and really the next one is if we're doing something similar, y axis is not equal to zero, then our if uh, y axis is greater than zero, then direction equals up, else if y-axis is less than zero, that's the wrong way around. That should be down. Whoops, didn't write that right. That should be down actually. Else if we're going upwards, then direction equals up. Simple, done. Now we can of course just change that to just have this. In fact, why don't we just do it that way? Because we are not really checking to see if 
we need to flip the image or not. We're just changing the direction. So that's pretty much it. If you are coming from version A, then this is the biggest difference. And also a few, the macros, I'm just using three directional macros instead of four. But let's see what that looks like. Let's play the game and let's check that out. Hopefully, if I haven't made any mistakes, and I have, see here. So it says here, variable object player dot y axis, I know where that is, is not set before reading it. So basically, I have written x axis wrong. I will probably do another video, most likely in the next one, where I will go through reading errors. But for now, let's just keep this part of the video short or as short as possible. So here we are in the game. We can go right, we can go down, we can go up. And those work, so our directions work. Right direction works, and so does left. But you can see here that they're the exact same sprite. I'm just flipping them. And I mean, that works. So at this point, you have two options open to you now as to which version you're going to choose. If you haven't watched version A, then you can go back and watch that video. But really, if you wanna go for that old school programming style, then this is more or less the method that they would have used. They would have just flipped the sprite instead of including more sprites into the actual game. Uh, back then it was a matter of saving space in the game. So using up, you only had so many megabytes to work with. But now that we have more, I think if you wanted to use four different sprites or four different directions, then you're free to do so. Like computers are at a point where they can do that. So it's up to you which method you're going to use. I've just given you the option of choosing. I've given you guys the ability to, ch to choose for yourself which one you want. So that's all for me guys. I hope you've learned something. You can look at that code again if you're lost or if you're confused or if you don't know which one you should go with then you can always ask me in the comment section below in the next video we will be cleaning things up a little bit and starting on our state machine a little more on that when the video does come around but for now that's all for me guys hope you've learned something and i hope to see you in the next video okay that's all for me bye